This episode is dedicated to Eliahu David K. Eli K. of blessed memory, who was killed by a Hamas terrorist in Jerusalem in November 2021. This is Johnny Gould's Jewish State. Isaac Herzog's trip to the UK as President of Israel has set a new high mark in a deepening relationship with the UK. He's the 11th president and the son of a former one, Chaim Herzog. It's the first time a son's followed in his father's footsteps into this highest office. No pressure on any of his three sons then, huh? For those who listen, for those who are willing to listen, this is Johnny Gould's Jewish State. In only the previous episode, Her Majesty's Ambassador in Israel, Neil Wigan, tracked just how far the British and Israeli relationship has come. 20 years ago, I never would have imagined that relationships would be uh, as close as they are. I was down to the Ovda Air Force Base in southern Israel and saw um, six RAF fighters, which, as the head of the Israeli Air Force said, that's the most fighters you've had in Israel since you left in 1948. I mean, it's a a real depth of cooperation, which uh, has moved on a lot. And you mentioned as well Israel's global perception. So I think the perception of Israel has changed thanks a lot and thanks to its technology. So Israel is providing the kind of technologies in everything from cyber to healthcare um, that countries around the world are really interested in and really need to help them solve their problems. And I think that's changed the, the world's perception of Israel and to some extent Israel's perception of itself in the world in a very positive way. Just 48 hours before the president arrived in London, Home Secretary Priti Patel prescribed Hamas as a terror group in its entirety. Amid the fanfare of the president's visit, this is another sharp reminder of the threat Israel and the Jewish diaspora faces. I have laid an order in the United Kingdom Parliament to amend Schedule 2 of the Terrorism Act 2000 to prescribe Hamas in its entirety, including its political wing. Hamas has significant terrorist capability, including access to extensive and sophisticated weaponry, as well as terrorist training facilities, and it has long been involved in significant terrorist violence. But the current listing of Hamas creates an artificial distinction between various parts of that organisation. It is right that that listing is updated to reflect this. This is an important step especially for the Jewish community. Hamas is fundamentally and rabidly anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism is an enduring evil which I will never tolerate. Jewish people routinely feel unsafe at school, in the streets, when they worship, in their homes and online. This step will strengthen the case against anyone who waves a Hamas flag in the United Kingdom, an act that is bound to make Jewish people and the community feel unsafe. Anyone who supports or invites support for a prescribed organisation is breaking the law. That now includes Hamas in whatever form it takes. The role of President, Israel's head of state, is largely ceremonial. More about diplomacy than cutting-edge politics... That's the job of Israel's Prime Minister and his cabinet. But being president is not without its moments of frank requests, as you'll hear in his opening exchanges on Iran with Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The president also met the Prince and Princess of Wales, themselves just returned from the Middle East, where they toured Jordan and Egypt. And his first engagement was to an exhibition honouring the elite Jewish athletes that were murdered in the Holocaust. It was at Chelsea Football Club, hosted by owner Roman Abramovich. Isaac Herzog departs the chair of the Jewish Agency, the bridge between Israel and the diaspora, but pledges to continue strengthening ties to the Jewish state as the nation's president. His family spent over a century, four generations in the UK, before making Aliyah, and says his British Jewish heritage shaped his identity and informs his mission as president. In a moment, his speech to the UK Jewish leadership, introduced by Her Excellency Tsipi Chotoveli, Israel's ambassador to the UK, the event hosted by the Jewish Agency, with thanks to head of the delegation in the UK, Irit Barash. But first, the President's meeting at number 10 with Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who refers to prescribing Hamas as a terror group, 
committing to promises from the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow, strengthening trade ties, and from the president, a diplomatic arm twist on the forthcoming talks to quell the threat of a nuclear Iran. and the Jewish people and fighting anti-Semitism. Of course. And I must say that we're also, we saw your leadership coming out of the COP26 in Glasgow. And I want to thank Israel for what you did there. You were great. You guys. Yes, so uh, I will deliver it to our government. Thank you very much. And it shows also that Britain has developed its own narrative and world leadership in the world arena. And I know we have a lot to discuss, including Possible trade agreements, trade agreements, and, and lots of other issues uh, in, in in the region of Europe. Right, and then so the final words I want to say is, of course, thank you very much for your resolution on proscribing Hamas. Yes, it's a very important message to tell our organizations and those who are trying to radical and undermine the situation in the Middle East. And finally, as you are entering your negotiations on the P5 plus one on the Iranian nuclear situation. Uh, we're looking forward for our allies and the B5 plus one to be as tough as possible because we do not believe that they are uh, operating in a bona fide yep. manner. And I think uh, only if all, all options are on the table, things may move into the right direction. I, 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 well, I thank you, Mr. President. I want to, uh, to echo very strongly a couple of, the, of, the, of those points. And, First of all, on Hamas, I think we took the right decision. It was a, a difficult and, and a controversial decision, but I think the right thing. And by the way, I think a decision that was almost immediately uh, vindicated uh, by the uh, appalling events that we saw in, yeah. uh, in, in Israel. And uh, grandson of a rabbi. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Terrible, terrible thing. And your point about Iran is also, is also well made. And I think that uh, we see a situation in which, in which the world uh, doesn't have much time. Uh, Thank you all very much. Thank you, everybody. As you know, Israel doesn't have a royal family. But some people will say the Herzogs as the closest thing we have for a royal family. But there is a really big difference. The biggest difference is that Mr. Herzog, our president, was elected with a majority that Israel never experienced before when he became a president. 87 MKs, our parliament members, voted and chose Mr. Herzog to be our president. How did he do this magic? As being for 11 years in Israeli politics, I can tell you, this is not a magic that is because of his last name. This is because of hard work and his very, very unique personality. I was honored to be his friend and a colleague for many years. There is a joke in politics, you can only have friends in other parties because the people in your own party always want you to be out of the game. But with our president, Itzhak Buzi Herzog, this is not the case. He was everybody's friend because he respected everyone. So it's really my honor to join you this morning for this very unique event. Today, we are joined by the president, who his roots are deeply embedded in the proud story of British Jewry. As many of you know, President Herzog's father, President Chaim Herzog, served in the British Army, and his grandfather and great-grandfather were appointed as rabbis in Belfast and Leeds. It should come as no surprise that the foundations of an iconic Zionist dynasty were laid 
in the British Jewish community. A community whose history is so connected to Zionism. A community who fought for and received the promise of the Jewish homeland. And a community that to this day continues to stand up for the state of Israel. I want to recognize the support of the Jewish leadership that is provided on every single day and every time we want to achieve something. And most recently, for your assistance in calling up the, the UK government to fully proscribe Hamas. This is a great achievement of this embassy together with your proud work. Your work has helped to make our country significantly safer and is a reminder of all that we can achieve when we work together. Before I was posted to be ambassador, I wanted to get a good advice. So everyone told me, go to the former ambassadors. I went to get a good advice from Mark Reger, from Daniel Taub, from Ron Prosor. They're all wonderful people. But then I got the best advice. I was advised to go and get the advice of President Herzog, that back then was a great friend and the head of the Jewish agency. So I walked into his room, and he was so upset with me because I was late in a few minutes. And then he told me, my first best advice to you is never be late in London or in Britain, and this will be half of your work, just attending and showing on time. I really try to follow this advice. My husband can tell you it's not an easy thing. After so many <laughs> years, he's been trying to fix my habit not to be on time, but since I arrived to London, I really try. And it wasn't the best advice. The best advice was, he said, you need to understand, this is the most Zionist community that the Jewish people ever had. Respect the heritage and the history, but take care of the future of the youngsters. And this is what we try to do together with, with Irit. And we will continue to make sure that the future of this community will be as glorious as its past. Thank you very much. Good morning, good morning, dear friends. Good morning. Shalom to all of you. Shalom, good morning to all of you. What a great pleasure and honor and excitement it is for me and Michal to be here with you in this event. First and foremost, I would like to acknowledge again the fact that three ladies preceded me. I think it's another sea change in the Jewish world. And the fact that we have our new ambassador, Tsipi Chotoveli, it's true. Whatever she says is true. But I will add the following. Where did she touch my heart? So you should know, because I believe that part of the problem with our deliberations and conversations as human beings and as a nation is that we, we prejudge human beings according to the way what they said in politics or what they have expressed without knowing the story behind the person. So Tsipi's family are uh, Jews who came from Georgia. And she's built herself in a, in a maverick way, getting up to all the way up to this incredible position. And she was a very learned journalist and a very influential politician. But what, I, what touched my heart was that one day in the plenum, I'm the leader of the opposition. She comes to me and she shows me a speech by my late uncle, Dr. Yaakov Herzog, who so many of you have known him uh, back in the 60s and 70s as an illustrious diplomat and spokesman for Israel. And I said to myself, she's got out there, she's, she's a learned person and very impactful. So thank you, Tsipi, and your husband all, and great success in your service. And I also want to tell you another th good thing. You know, we all love the Israel Defense Forces, but I love the Israel Defense Forces for two reasons. First, because that's where I met Michal. And second, it's, that's where we, we both met Irit. So we, ha we served with Irit in the army in those days, in the 80s. And I, little did I imagine that uh, decades later would I appoint Irit as the head of the Jewish agency, the Sochnut mission and delegation in the United Kingdom. So it shows you that we all live in a shtetl after all. But the truth of the matter is that it is in this city, the future of Zionism and the creation of the nation state of the Jewish people, Medinat Israel, took place. 
And three years after the Balfour Declaration, in Union Station, there was a huge gathering receiving Dr. Chaim Weizmann returning from the San Remo Conference, which actually recognized the Jews' rights in Palestine, a historic resolution which applies until today in international law. In the gathering, and I saw it in the diaries of Meyer Wigeder from Ireland, which were published a few years ago by the National Library of Israel. In the, he writes in his diary as one of the most exciting moments of his life, thousands of people gathered in Union Station to receive Dr. Chaim Weizmann. With them were Diane Chaikin, Rabbi Meyer, who came from Palestine, and Diane Shmuel Yitzchak Hillman, who was my great-grandfather. And for me, that was just a hint that the impact of this land on my family's life is enormous. As we go back four generations in this land, serving in, as rabbis in communities from Glasgow to Belfast to Leeds to Manchester and London. And thereafter, going forward to my grandfather, who was the chief rabbi of the Irish Free State, which impacted his life tremendously also with his doctoral thesis both in London University and in the Sorbonne about the dying purple and the blue, which he wrote in 13 languages, including ancient Chinese, which I tell the current rabbis today, you can be both and both, a scientist and a rabbi. And Rabbi Mervis would definitely agree with me as, as his predecessor, the late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Allah Shalom. And thereafter, my father's story in this land, of course, his service in the British Army, the, his uh, immense connection of the family with the Wolfson family. And further on, I grew up with this community in my veins. And you know it all too well. And I just clearly rec recall a huge gathering of the Jewish community in UJIA under the helm of Sir Trevor Chin, who's with us here today, receiving my father as the president of the State of Israel back in 1984. And thereafter, of course, my father went to meet Her Majesty the Queen in Buckingham Palace for lunch. When he met the Queen, the Queen told him, you know, we are, in our annals, we believe we are descendants of King David. Now, my family lineage, without too much ego, has a lineage that goes all the way back to King David as well. So my father said to the, Her Majesty, welcome to our family. <laughs> and that's why we feel so much at home in this country. Anyway, the Jewish community of Britain is at the forefront of Jewish life uh, abroad outside Israel and is an exemplary community. And as an exemplary community, it unifies all facets of Judaism and strives to meet current challenges of the day. And so many of you are dealing with this day in, day out, with the challenges of what it is to be a Jew outside the state of Israel. And in each generation, there are challenges. On the one hand, there are some very positive developments. The current relations between Israel and Her Majesty's government is incredible. And the amount of cooperation on so many fields is unprecedented. And I've had the enormous pleasure of meeting His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, yesterday. And the amount of issues that we are so proud to work together is really incredible. But on the other hand, of course, there are challenges which never fade away and, on the, and naturally at times also increase. Uh, Israel hate, anti-Semitism, issues of Jewish identity. How do we build the future of young generation to be connected to Israel and be proud Jews living wherever they are as Jews without harassment and no fear uh, uh, wherever they are. These are huge problems that face our nation because of the modern day access to technology, to hate rhetoric, to fake news, and, and, and as we've seen recently also with the attack on the ambassador at LSE. So the challenges are also more enormous because you want to keep Jewish life thriving and success, successful. You want to keep communities. And the interlinked with the state of Israel is enormous. 
at times extremely painful, such as the enormous sadness that was bestowed on us, unfortunately, with the killing of the grandson of Rabbi Shlomo Levin of West Hampstead Synagogue just a few days ago in a terror attack in Jerusalem, with Eli David K. being assassinated and murdered by a Hamas terrorist. And on the other hand, the incredible experiences that young British Jews experience in Israel experiences through the programs that the Jewish Agency has with UJIA in Israel. I mean, incredible programs which impact their life and their leadership role in the community. So the ground for uh, cooperation is being ever strong. And when I entered my position as chairman of the Jewish Agency, I was kind of worried to see that we don't have enough of a strong presence, we meaning the Jewish Agency, in this land, in so many programs. And I'm so happy to hear you, Amira, describing the wonderful young uh, shlichim, who are some of them 18-year-olds, who take a gap year before the army and tutor and educate and work with your children and grandchildren throughout the Jewish community, as well as represent and work with the Jewish members on campus, in campuses around the United Kingdom, who are challenged by Israel hate and questions of anti-Semitism. So I think the ground for cooperation and impact is enormous. Michal and I, and as you know, Michal represented the Morris and Vivian Wall Foundation in Israel for the last 12 years. That's why we had another connection to British Jewry in so, such a proud manner. Michal and I have put the issue of the relations between the nation state, between Medinat Israel, and World Jewry as a top item on our priority list, and we in intend to invest a lot of time and effort to making sure that all Jews, wherever they are, whichever denomination they are, whatever they believe in or don't believe in, feel at home in the state of Israel. And we want to uh, say as well to the British Jewish community that you are going to be a central pillar in this activity because you are an exemplary community. So in conclusion, I'm extremely honored and excited to be here, as I feel I bear the weight of previous generations who've treaded in this land. And recently I read a eulogy of my great-grandfather, Rabbi Shmuel Yitzchak Hilman, on King George V in Hebrew, where he delivered this sermon throughout the synagogues. And these synagogues are still active and successful. And I'm saying to myself, I hope that in a hundred years' time, we'll be able, people will be able to look back and say, yes, they've built strong roots in this community, and it's linked to Israel. Thank you. Toda Rabba to all of you. And Bat Johnny Gould's Jewish State podcast is totally free. I receive no funding from any central community fund, which is good, as it remains completely independent. But not so much because, well, I don't get paid. If you enjoy my regular podcast, a one-off donation is always gratefully received and noticed. But a monthly subscription really makes all the difference. To do so, go to paypal.me slash Jonathan L. Gould. That's paypal.me slash Jonathan L. Gould. This is Johnny Gould's Jewish State. North America, Europe, the Commonwealth, the whole of the Middle East. The world is listening.